work on the world ro rotator is progressing. Uh, I've got the motor in, I've got the spur gears between the variable, variable speed gearbox and the motor. Um, and next I've got to put a, a stub shaft on here because I need to, to put, a, put a gear on here to change the direction of um, rotation from around this axis to around this axis where the, the turntable is going to be. Just a word on this uh, gearbox. It's a mechanical device, it uses cones and uh, it, it's, it's rather remarkable because it'll go from something like 55% of its input speed down to zero with no, uh, apparently with no appreciable lo less loss of torque. So in terms of uh, this application, it's, it's fine. I don't expect much torque to be on there anyway, but there we go. Through the magic of television, there's the, the stub shaft. Um, I've, I've already made it and I'll, I'll run you through that. I guess the key thing about this is that the keyway where that, sorry, the board that that mounts has a keyway in it and being a blind hole, uh, you need to think a little bit about how to get that keyway in there. Uh, and so I'll show you how I do that and how I make sure that uh, this part is basically concentric with the, with the ball. So that'll slide on there like so. There's a, there's a grub screw down here to hold that on. And then the gear, this isn't the gear, but uh, uh, to run it the same size, uh, goes on there. There's a, a nut that goes on here and uh, there's another bearing that'll go on here. And that will basically get most of the power transmission done. What I then need to do is put a, um, a, a, an axis in here with a gear uh, that's going to be reasonably large because I want to get a, uh, you know, a, a 25, 26 millimeter bore down there just to uh, give myself a little bit of uh, ability to take long thin things. And uh, we go from there. To start with, I've machined out a bush. Or a socket to go over the, the motor shaft and that's a that's quite a, a, a neat fit there which is what I want. I've also machined a stub shaft which is going to go in there like so. I'll weld around that then I'm going to machine that down to final size and the reason I do that is I want that bore to be concentric with whatever's on here. And I'll show you how I do that in a moment. A couple of things on grub screws though, and on keyways too. Let's do keyways first. Keys such as this uh, are probably about, probably about the second most common way of driving low horsepower applications. And uh, one thing the old school tool makers used to do, or machine makers used to do, was put a slot in the end of the of the key. Um, just so that when you try to get the key out of the slot you can pop a screwdriver in there and pry it up. This one's still a bit tight but I've done that because well, you can see the, the possibly see the marks on the side there um, all the all the scratches and things and dings and marks from where people have tried to use pliers to get this out. Um, so that's that's a, 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 just a little tip: is that if you, if you can uh, pop a pop a slot in there, and whether that's with hacksaw or an angle grind or whatever, doesn't matter. Now, grub screws. Um, they are probably the most popular way of doing things, and people just have a, a plain shaft with a grub screw going through into a, a motor shaft. That's one way of doing it. The other is a keyed socket like that with a grub screw in there. Now. I like to put grub screws on the opposite side because I've got a, I've got more thickness there than if I put them on top of the key. I've seen them done on top of the key. Typically, we talk about um, having one D, two, two D, or one and a half D worth of thread engagement. Anything over two diameters of your of your threaded fastener, and you're probably wasting your time. Uh, anything less than one D. Um, well, it, it, it's it's good enough. I mean, bolts are, are slightly less than a diameter high, but uh, sorry, nuts are slightly less than a, a bolt diameter high. But you know, typically when tapping something, you aim for uh, 
anywhere between one and, and, and two diameters. So that way I have a sm slightly smaller diameter socket and I can do that. If you feel you need more holding power, you can put two grub screws like that. I use the term grub screws, simply we use set screws by the way. You can have them at 90 degrees to each other and that'll push the shaft over to, to one side. One thing you don't want is have them 180 degrees diametrically opposed because what happens then, if you can imagine that uh, this pencil is the shaft, it's, it's, it's going to pivot on those two grub screws. Okay, So that's what not to do. For those of you with brooch sets like this, or tempting to buy a brooch set like this, I find that these are uh, quite handy to have, but typically the labelling on these um, bushes is stamped, and so it's slightly raised. And so I find that what I have to do is, when I've bored something out to size, I sometimes have to go along with a file or a linisher or something, and just smooth that down so to to get it so that it is actually the size it's meant to be, rather than just a little bit over. So back at the lathe, I've welded my socket onto the bar there. Uh, that was held tight in a, in a clamp when I, when I did that to try and make sure I had everything lined up. I've tapped it for a grub screw. And what I've done here is I've just got a bit of steel. I've turned that up to the size of my motor shaft. And so that is actually a, a nice, neat sliding fit. And what I'll do is I'll secure that with a grub screw. And that way it's going to be done the same way as it will be on the motor shaft. And then I can, I can uh, send a drill, I can turn that down to the, 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 the appropriate size. And uh, I'll have a, a shaft which should be concentric with the axis of the lathe. Because I haven't moved this piece of bar stock since turning that little stub on it. So that, with a neat fit on there, should give me maximum concentricity. And that's that's one reason why you want to try and make the sockets that go into motor shafts and, and things that pause that go into motor shafts as close as you can, because it, it means that your concentricity becomes uh, much easier to achieve. So that's a quick rundown on how to get, uh, or how I get keyways into into blind sockets, and how to get concentricity out of a a, a, a socket shaft arrangement. I hope that's of use to people, and um, thank you to those who've uh, in taught and inspired me.